Well, let's take a walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. We begin by reviewing the overall structure. First process loop is a time loop and it contains an oscillator that drives LED zero. This blinks according to the rate of iteration time of the loop. I've placed a non-deterministic element inside the time loop that reads a folder path and displays all the folders and files. Normally you would not place such a function inside of a time loop because it might take too long. The desired time can be adjusted here. The structure measures the actual amount of time inside the loop and thus indicates whether or not the loop finished late on the previous iteration. So that's a measure of whether or not we've got problems with determinism. The second process loop is a time loop with frames and each frame operates as its own time loop and each one is synchronized to the same time source. This delays the start of the next frame, in this case 250 milliseconds, and then the next one delays the third frame by 500 milliseconds. Let's configure the basic time loop. We have the input node and you can expand or contract the number of options available for external control. You have a number of clock sources that you can choose from, and I've picked the slower speed one kilohertz clock because the period is rather long, 500 milliseconds. You can learn a lot more about the advanced features of the time loops by checking the help page. We have our left data node, the right data node, and then the output data node. Right click on the loop frame and select help to see all of the available options that are available for the time loop and just to learn a lot more about what's going on. Here I'm looking at the actual end time and comparing that to the previously stored end time, taking the difference and then reporting that on the front panel. Now let's take a look at configuring time loop number two. After you have placed the time loop, right click on the frame and choose add frame after and you do this each time you want to add another frame. Here's how we get to delays. Choose the option for start time, and then you choose your delay amount. So in this case, the delay is 250. Note that the sum of all the delay values must not exceed the overall loop time. Let's finish up by looking at stopping parallel loops with a single stop button. The first time loop pulls the stop button. This loop would stop first. Then a local variable communicates that information to the second time loop. Here's how you take care of local variables. You can choose from any available front panel indicator or control, and then you can change the mode from read to write. Therefore, loop number two stops second. Feeding the false constant out to the local variable one more time unsticks, if you will, the stop button. Also, I need to point out that you need to choose the switch when pressed mode instead of the default latch action.